an underdog hero gets the life he's always wanted to live with the help of bedtime stories. Marty Bronson, the owner of the Sunny Vista Motel, built and ran it with the help of his two children, Wendy, the serious little girl who begrudgingly handed keys to the motel guests, and Skeeter, a young boy working as a porter. To Skeeter, the motel was a wonderland. Since Skeeter was always brimming with improvement ideas, Marty rewarded his son with bedtime stories. Marty knew he was a great dad and host to guests, but he admitted he was a bad businessman. The motel's fate was in the hands of some businessman named Barry Nottingham. Marty had always hoped the motel would be his children's home, but not selling it would lead to bankruptcy. Unfortunately, he was forced to sell the motel to Barry on a promise that Skeeter would one day run the hotel. In Barry's hands, the motel became one of the finest hotels in Los Angeles and turned into Sunny Vista Nottingham. However, Barry's promise to let Skeeter run the show was forgotten. 25 years later, Skeeter works as a handyman at the hotel, still dedicated to caring for his father's dream. Later at a social function, Skeeter's fixing electric wirings in the podium with Kendall, one of Barry's prized employees who's getting impatient. Once he's done, Skeeter playfully urges the audience to welcome Barry. Barry, however, is disgusted by germs and refuses to shake Skeeter's hand. As Skeeter leaves, Barry speaks to the crowd and reveals he'll build a new Sunny Vista Mega Nottingham with a top secret theme. Beside a confused Skeeter, Violet, Barry's daughter, wonders what the fuss is about. Barry is about to announce who the new hotel's general manager is, and Skeeter gets disappointed when the man names Kendall. Afterwards, Barry approaches Violet and asks Skeeter if he knows her, but Skeeter fumbles over his words and talks about her old reputation as a party girl. Then, Kendall arrives and points out that the old Violet has changed since she met him. Later, Wendy hosts a children's birthday party for her daughter, Bobby. When Skeeter arrives, one kid grabs a chocolate chip cookie he's brought while everyone ignores Wendy's wheatgrass cake. Wendy complains about it, but Skeeter also reminds her she hasn't invited him over in four years. In the interim, Wendy and her husband divorced, but she doesn't want to pursue the topic. Her kids aren't taking the divorce well either. Skeeter finds siblings Patrick and Bobby and gives Bobby a gift full of hotel items. Then Wendy calls him outside. She asks him not to talk about their school since it will be closed down and she's getting laid off. Because she'll be in Arizona for a week for job interviews, she requests Skeeter to babysit the kids. Skeeter initially protests, but he eventually agrees when he learns that Jill, Wendy's co-teacher, will take the day shift. Afterward, as Skeeter goes to his truck, Jill arrives and scolds him for taking two parking spaces. The two argue for a bit, and when Jill realizes he's Wendy's brother, Skeeter just wants her not to be hostile all the time. In the hotel kitchen later, Skeeter's best friend, Mickey, wonders why Skeeter didn't demand to leave the new hotel after Barry's promise and reminds Skeeter that Kendall will take everything from him. Then, Skeeter's phone rings with Jill on the line, telling him it's his turn to watch the kids. That night, Jill is making protest placards with the kids when Bobby asks if her dad might come back. Thankfully, Jill doesn't have to answer as Skeeter arrives. As Jill leaves, Skeeter realizes he doesn't know what the kids want to do. Because the kids don't like his suggestions, he suggests bedtime instead. But before they let Skeeter go, Patrick asks him to read a bedtime story. Finding the book titles boring, Skeeter refuses to read them. Then, Skeeter puts Bugsy, the kid's wide-eyed guinea pig, inside the cage and decides to make up a story for the children. Skeeter's first story begins with a brave and handsome knight named Sir Fixalot, who's actually just a lowly peasant who knows how to run a castle but is always taken for granted. Instead, the kingdom loves Sir Buttkiss. Other characters include Mickey as Friar Fred, the two kids as Mistress Stinky and Master Smelly, and Jill as a mermaid teacher. One day, the the king chooses Sir Buttkiss to run the castle, to Sir Fixalot's disappointment. So Sir Fixalot moves into a giant shoe and gets eaten by crocodiles. When Patrick gets horrified by the lack of a happy ending, Skeeter tells him there are no happy endings in real life. But Bobby thinks it's unfair and decides Sir Fixalot should be given a chance. And so the story changes. The king gives Sir Fixalot a chance. Then Patrick wants it to rain gumballs as anything can happen in a story. When Bugsy rings the bell, the kids decide to sleep. The next day, Skeeter receives a call as the TV in Barry's room isn't working. So with Bobby and Patrick, he goes to the hotel. Violet arrives in time after getting followed by the paparazzi, and Skeeter asks her to watch the kids. Upstairs, Barry sits in the dark and gets mad at Skeeter for turning the lights on. He needs it dark so he can fight his cold. When Skeeter asks about the new hotel, Barry can't help but reveal the secret theme, rock and roll. But another hotel already uses that theme, says Skeeter. Pissed, Barry summons Kendall and reprimands him. That's when Barry decides to give Skeeter a chance to prove himself. 
if he can come up with a better theme, he'll run the new hotel. Barry decides the two will present their ideas at his birthday party. Meanwhile, Patrick's telling Violet about his crush, Trisha, when Jill arrives to pick them up. Later, Skeeter tries racing with an arrogant driver, but his truck engine dies. Suddenly, it rains gumballs, and he struggles to close the sunroof. Skeeter stands under the rain and gets spooked, but as it turns out, the gumballs are coming from a delivery truck that got into an accident on the bridge above him. In the hotel, Kendall is confident he'll crush Skeeter, and his paramour, Aspen, the receptionist, gets excited. Then, Jill arrives with the kids to look for Skeeter. With some banter, Jill leaves the kids with Skeeter in his home at the hotel. He wonders if anything weird happened to the kids and shows them some gumballs, but Bobby simply says they're not allowed to chew gum. For dinner, the kids eat their first hamburgers ever brought by Mickey. Once they're done, Skeeter tells a new story. This time, a farmhand named Jeremiah Skeets wants a new horse to get ahead in the world. He asks a Native American chief for his finest horse, and out comes Ferrari, a bright red horse that the chief gives to Jeremiah freely. Though Skeeter wants it to end there, the kids are unsatisfied. Instead, Bobby suggests Jeremiah will save a damsel in distress. So continuing the story, Jeremiah finds a woman named Miss Davenport surrounded by goons. Jeremiah smoothly and single-handedly saves Miss Davenport, and she thinks he's her hero. Although Skeeter wants to segue the story elsewhere, Bobby decides to have Miss Davenport kiss Jeremiah as his reward instead of money. Then, Patrick adds that an angry dwarf will kick Jeremiah, and that's the end. As the children go to sleep, Skeeter asks Mickey to watch them. Later, Skeeter's eyeing a Ferrari in a car showroom when some man comes beside him. Naively, Skeeter thinks he'll get a free Ferrari, but the man tricks him and steals his wallet. Elsewhere, Violet, surrounded by paparazzi and gets lost in their blaring lights, arriving and seeing the commotion, Skeeter splashes everyone with puddle water and demands them to return the photos. When they refuse, he fakes a gunshot using the car engine, and they all panic and drop their cameras, which Skeeter gets rid of afterward. Like the story, Violet asks how she can repay Skeeter and eventually leans close for a kiss. However, a dwarf kicks Skeeter, and Violet decides to leave. That's when she walks to her Ferrari, and Skeeter thinks he'll receive it as a reward, but Violet is weirded out and leaves him standing. The next day, as Jill picks the kids up, Skeeter realizes the children control the story because Patrick said the dwarf would kick Jeremiah. When Jill decides it's time to leave, Skeeter walks them out and promises to tell the kids a nice story when they return. That's when Kendall marches up to him to remind him of his maintenance duties. About Skeeter's heroic act with Violet, Kendall thinks it won't work. When Skeeter Peter says he's considering keeping Kendall once he runs to the new hotel. Kendall taunts his skills, which he likens to Marty's. Moments later, Kendall arrives at the new hotel site, Webster Elementary School, the same school that Patrick and Bobby attend. Recognizing Jill, Kendall turns around. When Wendy calls to ask about the kids, Skeeter brushes her off and takes them camping despite her protests. That night, Skeeter sneaks the kids to the rooftop, where they roast marshmallows with Jill, who lets this one slide. Skeeter tells them about the constellation game he used to play with his father and they identify figures in the night sky. When Bobby asks if their father will return, Skeeter reminds them they'll always have their mom, Jill, and him, making the kids smile. With Jill leaving for night school, Skeeter begins a story to get hotel theme ideas, but because the kids find it boring, he decides to combine action and romance in an ancient Greece setting. Here, Skeeticus, an underappreciated hero, finally gets the chance to prove himself in the grand arena. With his tricks, he wants to impress the emperor's daughter and rule the land. Skeeticus tries a daring move move, toppling pillars to create ramps, setting free the elephants, and planning to soar over them and land unscathed. He pulls this off, and everyone's impressed. Bobby gets impatient and wants to get to the romance, saying Skeeticus gets the fairest maiden in the land. Bobby continues that they'll go to a tavern where all the girls who were mean to Skeeticus are gathered. They're jealous he's with the fairest maiden and suddenly begin to play hokey pokey. Then, at the beach, they find an unconscious man. With a swift kick, Skeeticus lets loose a fish stuck in the man's throat, saving him. One once it rains, Skeeticus and the Maiden seek shelter under a magical cave. Then Abe Lincoln arrives, but because it doesn't make sense, Skeeter gets impatient. He quickly apologizes, but the kids ignore him that night. And so the next day, Skeeter's at the beach. Violet calls him, but she's headed to Las Vegas. Thinking Violet's the fairest maiden, Skeeter walks away when Jill accidentally bumps into him. As it turns out, she's job hunting and decided to pass by the beach. She wants to treat him to a meal, but the restaurant they enter is full of women who recognize Skeeter. One of them, Donna, 
stands and tells them they're planning a high school reunion while the others begin talking about him. Skeeter whispers to Jill, asking her to be his fake girlfriend. Though hesitant, she agrees. So the two awkwardly pretend to be a couple, and the girls get jealous of Jill's prettiness and petite figure. Donna apologizes for being mean to Skeeter in high school, especially now that he's turned out pretty cute. Suddenly, the ladies begin playing hokey pokey. Weirded out, Skeeter and Jill head for the beach. Since Wendy will return the next day, Jill says the kids will be sad they won't have good stories anymore. More. Like the story, they find a man on the beach who Skeeter saves. Then, it rains and they hide under the docks. Jill wishes Skeeter good luck with his presentation, and he invites her to be there. That's when Skeeter realizes she's the fairest maiden in the land. In the rain, they stare and lean close to kiss when Skeeter blurts out that something weird will happen. Realizing they're making a mistake, Jill backs away, but Skeeter insists that Abe's coming when a penny falls from above. Amused, Jill walks away as Skeeter curses Patrick's ideas. That night, Skeeter teaches the kids how to use shaving cream since their father isn't around to do it. Mickey asks about his strategy for tomorrow's presentation, and Skeeter plans to rely on bedtime stories. And so it's time for their last bedtime story. The Supreme Galactic Council has met to decide who would control the new planet in the Nottinghamian star system. Leader Barakdo is expected to choose General Kendalo, but others bet on wildcard Skeeto. Because they're in outer space, Patrick wants Skeeto to talk like an alien with his sidekick as his translator. The leadership will be decided using a zero gravity fight. With gravity gone, Skeeto and Kendalo fight using slapping guns, also pinching noses, and tickling ears. But because Barakto's daughter is unimpressed, he releases the booger monster, sending Skeeto and Kendalo flying aimlessly. Bobby wants the monster to kiss Kendalo. By luck, Skeeter reaches the gravity lever and activates it. Kendalo falls, with the booger monster squashing him. And so, Barakto declares Skeeto the winner, like a perfect ending with everyone cheering. But the kids take Skeeter's words, there are no happy endings. So they have Skeeto incinerated with a fireball. Skeeter panics and asks the kids to retract that ending, but they all fall asleep. The next day, Kendall is at Webster Elementary School and reveals to Jill that it's where the new hotel will rise. As Skeeter drives to the birthday party, all songs on the radio are about flames. Stopping by a hardware store, he buys items that will prevent him from catching fire. Nottingham residence is Skeeter's nightmare. The celebration is Hawaiian-themed and full of flames. He freaks out at the flames and doubts a server bringing him harmless ice cream. When Mickey shows up, Skeeter asks about Jill, who isn't around yet. Then, Violet emerges from the pool, with Mickey scampering for a towel. He mutters, I love you, taking her attention. Skeeter's eating ice cream, not spotting the bee he takes inside his mouth. The bee stings his tongue, and he spits it out just as the gong sounds. Aspen invites everyone to the living room for the hotel idea meeting. Inside, Barry invites some commoners to gauge their reactions to the ideas. Kendall goes first and, after complimenting Barry, reveals his theme, Broadway. After an unimpressed crowd clap awkwardly to Kendall's musical performance, it's Skeeter's turn. Skeeter then begins speaking gibberish. Barry wonders what's wrong when Mickey translates that he's stung by a bee. Impressed at Mickey, Barry asks him to translate. Skeeter presents his theme. A hotel should be an escape and be filled with fun limited only by imagination. Kendall thinks it's mediocre, but Barry makes Skeeter the new hotel's general manager. Everyone congratulates Skeeter, and Kendall collapses. Afterward, Kendall approaches Skeeter and compliments his guts to tear down the school of his niece and nephew for the hotel. Of course, this stuns Skeeter. When Barry walks up to him, Skeeter tries talking about the location, but the man brushes him off as everyone starts singing Happy Birthday. Fire performances start, intimidating Skeeter. As Barry blows out the sparklers on his cake, Skeeter panics and douses it with a fire extinguisher. Angry, Barry fires Skeeter. That's when he realizes what the kids meant in the story. The next day, Skeeter looks for Jill in the school to explain he had no idea about the hotel's location, but she asks him not to make excuses about knowing nothing, wanting him to just stay away. Later, Skeeter's packing his things at home and Wendy knocks. She's also mad at him, but it's because he told the kids there are no happy endings. She says she was hoping Skeeter's optimism would rub off on her kids. She reveals she got a teaching job in Arizona and asks him to visit. With a kiss, she bids Skeeter goodbye. Once he's alone, Skeeter realizes he needs to do something unexpected to save the day and leaves. Barry arrives at the zoning commissioner's office, with Jill following him and pleading with him to stop 
stop the demolition. At Webster Elementary School, teachers and students gather to protest. Kendall decides that if they don't hear anything about the variance request from Barry in 20 minutes, they'll blow up the school. Meanwhile, Patrick and Bobby slip away. For Barry, the war is over, but as they enter the office of the zoning commissioner, who turns out to be Donna, they find her discussing something with Skeeter. Donna denies Barry's variance request and Skeeter presented strong arguments. Barry gets angry, but miraculously, they've found an available beachfront location for the new hotel. At school, Kendall wants everyone to turn their phones off because of the sensitive explosives. Odd that he fixed everything, Jill wants to kiss Skeeter when Barry interrupts them. He can't call Kendall, and the demolitions in 13 minutes. Concurrently, Bobby and Patrick are back inside the school building to find a place for their protest sign. Unfortunately, Jill's car gets towed. With no other option, they steal a motorcycle and drive off. Turning to a golf course, Skeeter evades golf balls, like maneuvering around asteroids in space. At the same time, Wendy realizes her kids are missing. Skeeter topples a signage and uses it as a ramp to launch through a gap in a passing train, retrieving his wallet from the pickpocket in the process. It's now just a minute before the demolition, so a panicking Wendy shouts that her kids might be inside the building, but Kendall ignores her and gets control of the explosives. Skeeter and Jill swerve to the school's playground, spotting the kids inside the building. With Jill grabbing the monkey bar, Skeeter catapults from the motorcycle to kick Kendall away just before he detonates the explosives. Afterward, Skeeter announces that the school will stay since there's a new location for the hotel, and then everyone cheers. The kids emerge safely from the school building, hugging Skeeter, who doesn't want to let them slip away now. Trisha thanks Patrick for saving the school and kisses him. Of course, Skeeter kisses Jill too. In the aftermath, Skeeter started a business, Marty's Motel. On the rooftop, he roasts marshmallows with Jill and the kids. When they run out of marshmallows, he calls for room service and housekeeping, and Kendall and Aspen arrive. As for the rest, Barry became a school nurse at Webster Elementary School and left the hotel business to Violet and her husband, Mickey. Skeeter and Jill got married and lived happily ever after with Bobby and Patrick. The end. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.